This is going to be a video about toasters. I just got finished watching a video on Spat Spare's channel where he reviewed or actually showed a, um, a four slice toaster from the 1970s and compared it to his modern toaster that he just recently, I think he got it as a gift. And it got me thinking about this toaster. Now this is a toaster that was given to me by my real estate agent on the day of closing when I bought my condo on November 15th I think it was 2007 and uh, this is the toaster that I got very similar in design to the one Spat Spare has um, as far as the way it's built and the seemingly immense lack of quality and care uh, this is a GE, which is basically meaningless today. You know, there was a time when appliances, the name on the appliance actually meant something. That doesn't mean anything anymore. This Frigidaire refrigerator was manufactured by Electrolux in Canada. This GE microwave is probably an LG product. This GE toaster was actually manufactured in the People's Republic of Walmart, I mean China, for Walmart, by God only knows who. It is UL listed, um, which is something that Spat Spare's toaster was not, which I thought was kind of illegal. I don't know. <laughs> I just assumed that every appliance sold in this country had to be UL listed, but I guess not. Um, it does have a grounded plug, which is unusual. I've never seen a toaster with a grounded plug. And, uh... It's in pretty good shape. I mean, I don't really use it that much. Which is probably why it still works. The key to actually getting a long life out of your appliances these days is to not use them. Sad but true. Now, I have this toaster because... It was given to me. I would never have purchased it. Um, but I had a 1200-watt um, a Hamilton Beach toaster that I found in the trash from 19... probably from the early 1960s, mid-1950s to early 60s. And uh, I had that toaster for a number of years. Uh, I found it in 2004, and I had it up until 2008. What happened was it just randomly stopped working. Um, actually, no, the toaster still worked, but um, I had put some bread in it, and you know, probably seven, eight minutes later, the bread was burning. Uh, like there were flames shooting out of it. Um, the pop-up mechanism jammed, and it. Well, I wasn't willing to take a chance on it after that. So that's when I started using this one, in like 2008 or 2009. But like all electrically controlled toasters, if there's no power applied to it, it will not latch down on its own. It has what could be the most useless crumb tray I've ever seen. It is on the other side here, and it doesn't really hold anything. Most of the crumbs wind up inside the toaster, and you have to flip it upside down several times over a sink clean it out. This is the crumb tray. Most useless crumb tray I have ever seen. Which is why it's so clean right now. I just cleaned it out. Um, seems to be holding up okay. The nichrome wire is still... it's actually discolored, but that could be normal. It looks like we have what could be the grounding lug right there. Um, it still has some breadcrumbs stuck in it. And, uh... It's got that probably fiberglass kind of substance board holding the elements in place. Let's see how she runs. Um, one of the problems I have with this toaster is that it never really... I mean, it toasts, it pops up, it does everything it's supposed to do, but you have to have it on, like, really high to get the toast perfect. I mean, 
It kind of reminds me of the Proctor Silex toaster that my parents got for their wedding that we had up until um, the mid-1990s, until it finally died. But that toaster had this weird personality disorder. Now watch this. I'm going to put it on middle setting, and we're going to see just how toasted it is. It has a cancel button. So, there we go. Um, this Proctor Silex toaster that they had, it was a 1984 model, and it had a weird personality issue where if you walked away from it, it would burn the toast. But if you were standing in front of it, it would toast perfectly and pop up just fine. But if you walked away, it would burn. Really weird. So we have it on its middle setting. Um, I just got finished polishing up the fake chrome. Actually, it might even be real chrome. I had to take some steel wool to the top of it because it had some something or whatever baked onto it and cleaned that up. So anyway, yeah, that was a weird toaster. It had a personality like no other appliance I've ever seen. Let's watch the bread toast, and I might speed up the video. I don't like to make boring videos like this, but they seem to be quite popular, so this is what people want. This is what I'll give them. It has these uh, special functions, bagel, defrost, or reheat which, last I checked, were three very unnecessary functions. But the bagel function could be useful because what it does, and I just learned this from Spatspare's channel, I had never known this, but it changes the heat settings on the elements so that the center elements, and if you follow this diagram and put the bagel in properly, I'm sorry, the outer elements will uh, run hotter than the center elements, which burn or properly toasts the bagel surface for optimum spreadability. So let's just see how she does. I have never burned toast in this before. Um, it's never done that. It just always seems to require two toasting cycles. So either the timer or the temperature sensor is, is off, or there's something else wrong with it. I don't know. Let's see how it does this time. Uh, like Spatspare's toaster, this one is electronically controlled. Okay, it toasted pretty perfectly that time. So that was the middle sec uh, setting. All right, so that was actually, that came out pretty damn good. Okay, well I typically toast English muffins, so maybe that's, uh, maybe that's my problem. Let's try some more bread. This is Arnold whole grain oat nut. It's good bread. Um, unfortunately, I have no use for this toast, so I'm gonna probably throw it away or give it to the birds. The bread is old. I bought it like two weeks ago, so not really a big loss. Let's see how it does on number six. And maybe we'll play with the bagel function and see what... We're just put the bagel function on and see visually what happens. I'm not going to put toast in. <laughs> that would be stupid. Let's see what the bagel does. Okay. Bagel function completely turns off. Completely disables the center elements. See that? Let's cancel it. Put it back on. Oh yeah, and because it's electronically controlled, will it stay down if I pull the plug? No. That answers that question. All right, let's continue toasting our bread. You know, the sad thing is you can no longer buy a quality toaster. My parents bought a 100-something dollar uh, Cuisinart. Cuisinart? Cuisinart? How do you pronounce that? A very expensive toaster. And it still works and everything, but it's just as chintzy and cheap as this one is. I mean, it's really no better quality-wise. It doesn't feel like it anyway. And if you read the history of the Cuisinart brand, it really is nothing special. Um, you know, I have this blender by Cuisine Art that I got it as a gift, and it's a quality feeling appliance, but the control panel feels like it's made of mush. But anyway, uh, that's another video for another day. So we have it on number six. 
we toasted these on number four. Let's see what number six gives us. I might even still have the owner's manual for this toaster. Let's take a look. I think I stuffed it under this drawer somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's still here. Oh, there it is. Here is the owner's manual for the GE toaster. Model 169100. Neat. Tostadora. Numero de Cogigo del Producto. That must mean item stock number. Hmm. Never leave toaster unattended. Well then. Yeah, this is another complaint. Short power supply cord. Um, that was one of Spad Spare's complaints, and that is absolutely one of my complaints with this toaster. The cord is so damn short. I mean, why? Alright, and that was number six. And you can see the toasting difference. Just like Spad Spare's toaster, this one does not have a one slice uh, location. I, I, I really don't know if it uses a timer or if it uses a temperature sensor mounted somewhere. Um... But what I do know is that there is no one slice slot. So there you go. As far as appearance wise, it is pretty attractive for a toaster. I mean, I mean, if I was a coffee maker, I would totally hit that. But um, yeah, it's not really genuine stainless steel. I imagine if a magnet sticks to it, and then it does then it is not really stainless. So that means it could rust. But the stainless steelness is really just an illusion. Well, it's good to know that the control knob actually does something. I didn't think it did. What does defrost do? I bet you anything, it turns the coils off after a few seconds. I'm going to read the manual while the camera's running here. Features. Bagel defrost and reheat functions. Hmm. Defrost instructions. What would I be defrosting in this? Oh, maybe a waffle? Place toaster on flat level surface. Turn the browning control knob to the desired setting. Place frozen food in slots. When using only one toasting slot to toast food, the food may be placed in either toasting slot. Since the centering guides will automatically center the food for even toasting. Toast or toaster food will automatically pop up when the cycle is finished. The toaster will shut off automatically, blah blah blah. It doesn't really tell you what defrost actually does. Maybe it just runs longer to compensate for the frozenness of your food. One complaint that I do have about this toaster is that it does not really give you the option to pop the... Alright, my old toaster, I could pull this up a little bit higher to remove things like English muffins. But this one doesn't do that, and that is upsetting. So there goes my first toaster review, and I'm going to throw this bread outside for the birds. Probably throw the rest of the loaf away while I'm here. Anyway, um, so there you go. The Walmart toaster. Yes, Walmart is definitely killing the world one appliance at a time. Okay, if you don't believe me, then you are naive. Um, while we're here, I have finally made a decision on what I'm going to do with my kitchen. And uh, here's what's going to happen. These cabinets, as old as they are, are still pretty attractive in my opinion. I like the way they look. Um, but I don't have enough counter space. What am I going to do about it? Well, it just so happens that a friend of mine is remodeling his kitchen. And he is going to be 
removing his old cabinets which are identical to mine. Hee <laughs> hee. I am going to add a six foot counter section that will come out to about here and uh, or about here or so. It's going to actually straddle the center line and I'm going to build a knee wall behind it that will come out about six feet and then go in. Um, I went down to Lowe's and I picked out my new cabinet, uh, I'm sorry, my new countertops. I'm going to replace this countertop and, re and actually buy a new six foot section for the new counter and this is what I'm going to use. I figure it complements my floor pretty well and my white appliances because I like white appliances. They're easy to clean and they look good when they are clean and the white or almond stove and it pretty much matches the old melamine white cabinets. So there we go. I'll have six feet of counter space. Old man scooter is going to have to go somewhere else. I don't know where. But um, I think by that point I'll be driving it and uh, I'll park it somewhere else. I don't know where I'll put it. Hopefully I can um, I think I might actually rent a storage unit next year for this, just to get it out of my house. But um, so that'll be cool. It'll have uh, see. I have no actual drawers. These are dummy drawers. I have this. This is all I've got. So these new cabinets will actually have three full-size drawers and uh, lower cabinets for storage of other things. I'm going to give that away. I think I know who might want that. There we go. Problem solved. And uh, I get to keep my cabinets. Otherwise, I would be forced to replace these with something more modern and of lower quality because that's, you know, the way things are these days. If you look at the way these hinges are mounted, these are nice, high quality cast alloy bloom hinges. If you go to Lowe's and uh, look at what they've got on, you know, in store, um, they're just stamped steel and they work their way loose pretty quickly. And they're really crappy. So I'm going to stick with these and just, uh, and I can keep my stove because I don't have to replace my counters to make them more modern looking so my stove won't be as outdated looking when next to a newer cabinet because this stove is pretty much bulletproof. So I can have my cake and eat it too. Isn't that great? By the way, if you haven't had a chance to try this, I feel sorry for you. It was good ice cream when it was around, but sadly, it's gone. And that concludes this video, because I'm really not sure what else to talk about. Well, till then. Oh, this is awesome. Look at that. See, whole grain toast flies better. Oh, that one didn't go very far. Come on. Get some water in the lens. That's funny. It's really funny when the power goes out, like during a storm, and they all get stuck up there. Alright, that's not funny, but I've seen it happen more than once. Everyone starts screaming and panicking, and there's no light, it's pitch black. Yeah. I didn't know they were allowed to ski over there. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's the lift house.